The last two vlogs on the channel here were exploring this idea of wargaming narrative. Taking the time, whatever system you're playing, taking that time, setting it aside, getting together with friends, rolling some dice, having some terrain miniatures, blowing some stuff up, and getting the most out of the game. Certainly I have a competitive spirit, certainly I'm going to try and win, but one of the things that I enjoy with wargaming is, is very much the unknown. Not only what is my opponent going to do, but how are things going to play out? This is why in all of the gaming systems that I enjoy, I, I have my primary units, the units that are rock solid, that I love playing, but then I like taking stuff that has some cool abilities or needs to be in a very unique position to pull off. Something where, like Maximus said, are you not entertained? I want to have something cool, hopefully to my opponent rather than me, just something cool and fun to happen on the table. And uh, in exploring a little bit of a narrative on a side note, but it is related, I've been working on my third D&D campaign, Dungeons and Dragons campaign. It's, it's still a ways out. Um, I've got some ideas. No spoilers. If you're playing my current campaign, it is going to be a little bit more war game intensive. And, and what I mean by that, and this is this is pulling into the crossover, I'm looking at my miniature collection for D&D. And I want to utilize some or most of those miniatures in the game. Now, there's going to be role playing. There's going to be a chance for character development. But it is going to be encounter heavy. And it's going to be tactically heavy. So I'm looking at this. And, and this got me thinking where... This got me thinking back to this idea with terrain in wargaming. Many, many times it's tactical or mission-based. Tactically, just something as simple as, look, there's a giant hill in Battletech. If I can get my longbow behind it and infantry is at spotters and just indirect fire you. Or something like, hey, there's, there's a huge open area and some heavy woods on the far end. If I can get some units in that far end in the woods there, you know, if I can get my machine gun team in those woods, I've got cover. I'm hidden. I can ambush. Like, yeah, tactical. And terrain is important for wargaming. It pushes the tactics. And then there's mission-based terrain. You know, that, that comm center in the center of the table, i got to align the dish and, and hold it for five turns or till the end of the game to win. But what about, what about interactive terrain? And honestly, also Pacific Rim Extinction, the miniatures game has been pushing into this because the miniatures are fantastic. I'm like, I, I got to start working on some terrain for this. So I have this all going around. And then I was thinking in Warhammer 40K, those of you who have been playing for a while will correct me if necessary. You know, all these additions are just smashing together in my head. I, uh, the gold book for 40K, I think that was 6th edition. Was that the edition that first introduced um, warlord traits and stratagems? There was interactive terrain. And I thought this was really cool in the book where, and I'm not going to pull that book back out and look at it now that I think about it. You had terrain classifications in the book. And so ahead of time, you'd say, okay, this terrain piece here is forest-based. This terrain here is ruins. This terrain is something else on there. And with that classification, when you occupied, when a unit occupied that terrain piece or interacted with that terrain piece, you rolled on this chart to find out what exactly it was and, and what exactly it did on there. So it could be like some ruins and you roll on the chart and you find out, hey, there's a bunch of ammo and power cells in there. You get a bonus to shooting, or you can re-roll some dice. I mean, little fun things that encouraged this interactiveness with the table. Taking that war game and making it like, hey, um, figure out what's going on. And the last time I had something like that really, really happened to me. No joke. Absolutely um, no joke with this. This is how it, it happened. We were playing Chain of Command... Spanish Civil War, so a historical game. We've got all the terrain. And in Chain of Command, each turn, it's, it's a really kind of unique gaming system, um, each turn you roll a number of D6 dice representing your command points. So usually it's like five dice. And if you get a one, you can activate a support choice. If you get a two or a three, it's a section, a 
senior commander. If you get a five, it adds this extra point you can utilize later. If you get a six, nothing happens. But if you get two sixes, um, you get to go again. If you get three sixes, the turn ends and things happen. If you get four sixes, four sixes on 5d6, then a special event happens. I, I don't know what the odds are that, like 144 million to something. I, I don't know what the exact odds. One of you guys will crunch that. But in all the time that we were playing Chain of Command, maybe you roll three sixes out of five on there. That happens every now and then. Um, two sixes more often than not. And, of course, as you lose command dice, then you can't possibly roll it. So we're playing Chain of Command. We're playing... Um, we're playing Spanish Civil War, and I'm in this building, this old church building on there with, with my team playing it. I roll my command dice. I get four sixes. Right away, we're like, this has never happened. I, I, we've been playing maybe a year, and I'm trying to think. It, the last time I made legendary saves like that um, where I rolled those sixes was the old and vulnerable rules for Warhammer 40,000 when I was playing my Grey Knights. A soul grinder was smashing on my brother captain, and he had to make an invulnerable save. Fitting, I was playing against Chaos Demons. And I took those three hits, need to make three invulnerable saves, 3d6, I rolled 666 on there. So maybe four, maybe three or four times in my entire wargaming career, stuff like this has happened. So that what that means is, okay, you roll that, you got to interact with the terrain. We got to see what happens on there. And we were like, this has never happened before. Interactive terrain. So we go through the rule book. We roll on some charts, the chain of command. And it turns out, while my soldiers in that building were fighting, they discovered a massive, massive um, vault of wine and fine brandy, you know, buried in the basement of this church, buried in the basement of this building. And uh, according to the rules, they then decided to get extremely trashed and basically like, lose two turns or, or or be out of the halfway out of the game because they're just they're just done with the fighting on there and it was really really interesting when that happened so thinking about my D campaign thinking about things like that i want to do a little something with interactive terrain in war gaming i want to explore that a little bit maybe keying into the terrain pieces that i usually bring out maybe having a little index card of possible effects and, and putting that over to the side, I mean, I don't want to put it on the table and, and kind of kill the look, the vibe, but putting it aside and when someone enters into that terrain piece or occupies it or interacts with it, I don't know, roll a D6, 2D6. I mean, I'd want a, um, a number of different effects, but I wouldn't want the effects to be so like screw you over where you do nothing or um, so powerful where like now you can't be hurt for a turn or two. I don't know, an extra victory point, maybe an upgrade. Maybe an interrupt. I'm not sure. But what ideas do you guys have for interactive terrain? And uh, certainly with any type of wargaming systems to look into interactive terrain and, and maybe borrow some of those ideas.